Today I'm sharing five things you might not have known that you could make with your Instant Pot. Now, I use the Instant Pot quite often. I've slowed down a little bit in the summer because we eat stuff like hot dogs and hamburgers, but there are still things that you can make in your Instant Pot. Like these five recipes I'm gonna show you, I try to gear them towards summer, so it will make this time a little bit easier for you. So if you guys are ready, let's just jump right into the recipes. This one might be my favorite. Number one is our snow cone syrup. Now, I have actually not tried this before. This will be my first time attempting it, but Someone told me you could do it, so we're gonna give it a try and see how it goes. First, we're gonna take two cups of sugar and just put it into the bottom of our Instant Pot. Then we're gonna take one cup of water and pour that in. Now we're gonna knead this liquid, so we're actually going to pull it up a little bit and just kind of mix our sugar and water around. You don't wanna mix it completely because we need some of that liquid to so pressurize. So we're just making the sugar water. Now you have a few options. So you can either put the Kool-Aid, one packet of Kool-Aid in with your sugar water and make that just one flavor, or you can just make the sugar water and then add these after. So you can have a few different flavors with the same amount of sugar water. Okay, so we're not gonna add any flavoring in there. So we're gonna just gonna put the lid on. Make sure our little knob is turned to ceiling. Then we're gonna come down here and push pressure cook we only need this to cook for one minute. After the one minute, we're gonna let it release on its own for about 10 minutes. Oh, there we go, one minute, and it can just walk away. It's hit about 10 minutes, so we're just gonna go ahead and release the rest of the pressure. Sugar water, done. Oh, that actually worked out really well. That mixed together actually really well. Okay, we're just gonna, we're gonna pour it into a bowl to make our lives a little bit easier. Okay, so I'm just gonna take about half the packet and fill it into these little squeeze bottles. You can even do like a bowl if you want to. Actually, I added the whole thing. Meh, it's fine. Let's try the whole thing, see how that works. It might be very flavorful. <laughs> okay, and we're just gonna carefully fill this because it's hot. We let it cool a little bit before pouring just because you don't want it to be burning, burning, but I'm just gonna shake it up a little bit. Now it's time for the snow cone part. Yeah. All right, it is taste test time. We're gonna do the three, three colors because that's fun. Now red. Mm. And the blue. This literally reminds me of my childhood. Okay, taste test, let's see how it is. Mmm. That is good, I like that better than a normal syrup. I'm a fan, huge fan of this. I'm gonna rank this a five out of five. And the kids loved it too, yeah? You excited? Yeah. Okay, here we go. So good. So I saw that you can make some amazing cornbread in your Instant Pot. I haven't made this one either. We're gonna try it, see how it works. Yeah, and then I'll let you know if it's worth it or not, or if you just should cook it in your oven. So let's give it a try. So we're gonna start with one egg, crack it, put it in your bowl, and you're gonna whisk it like you have never whisked before. No, I'm just kidding, you can just whisk it like normal until it's pretty fluffy. Next, you're gonna add one cup of buttermilk, about a third cup of vegetable oil. I'm just gonna eyeball a little bit here. One cup of flour, one cup of cornmeal, Yum, I do like the smell of cornmeal. You need two thirds cup of sugar because you know, the world is just a better place with sugar. Right? Right. And then just one teaspoon of baking powder. Then you're just gonna mix this until it is well combined and it will be pretty thick. Wait, 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 I forgot. A little bit of salt. There we go, about a teaspoon. Much better. Okay, so I have this spring form pan. It's about seven inches by three inches. It can work in your Instant Pot or oven, or I just love using spring form pans. So I'm gonna use that today. I have it on this little trivet that came with my Instant Pot. Okay, you're gonna spray it with some cooking spray. There we go. We don't want it to stick. And we're just gonna pour it into the bottom of the spring form pan. Then we're just going to spread it out evenly. There we go. Now it's time to cover it with foil. Cover with foil. 
I'm just covering the top. I did see you can cover the bottom, but that doesn't make any difference to me. So we're just gonna cover the top. Oh, before we do that, we gotta pour in our water. So make sure you pour in one cup of water that needs to go on the bottom. Then we're gonna put our cornbread into the Instant Pot. Go ahead and put the lid on. Now if you have a little knob that's ceiling and venting, make sure you turn it to ceiling. Okay, then you're gonna push pressure cook. We need to cook this for 55 minutes. Once it's set, I can just walk away. All right, when it's done, I let all the pressure out. Once all the pressure's out, you can go ahead and open that lid. And let's pull this out. I'm excited to see how it turned out. All right, let's check this out. Oh, okay, it doesn't really look cooked, but it is hard. It is, it is cooked. Okay, let's, let's try it. This, oh, it's a weird texture. If you've ever made cake, it's kind of like a, a moist cake. I don't know. Maybe it will taste better than what I'm expecting, but the texture is definitely throwing me off. Okay, I love cornbread. I love it with butter. Can you see my little helpers in the back? <laughs> Lots of butter. Lots of butter to hopefully help the texture. Whoop. All right. Hmm. Okay. Tastes better than I thought it would. It's, it's definitely like a moist, moist cornbread, which is pretty good. It threw me off at first, but I like it. Okay, I'm gonna rate this one. I give it like 4.5 out of five, which is really, it really is good. Just the texture is just a little different, but I'm okay with it. Have you ever had that moment when you're out of caramel and it's very important that you need some caramel right then? Well, today, I'm gonna show you how to make homemade caramel or dulce de leche in the Instant Pot. Super simple and easy. You literally need one ingredient. So we're gonna start out with a 14 ounce can of sweetened condensed milk. Now I'm actually going to cook it inside of this can so we have to take the wrapper off. Now once the wrapper is off, this is the most important part. Take the lid off. You will have an explosion or something horrible, so make sure the lid is off. Now to make it a little bit easier, you wanna put something down below. So whether it's foil or a trivet, something so it's just not right sitting on the bottom. Then you're gonna cover your can with aluminum foil. Now make sure it is sealed tight, as tight as you can get it. Then you're gonna put your can just right on top of your trivet. Next, you're going to fill up your pot until the water is about halfway up the can. Now, although it's hard to tell here, the water is filling up, and when I'm done filling it up, it's halfway up the can. So now you're gonna put the lid on, make sure that it's really tight and sealed correctly, and you're gonna turn the knob to sealing. Now, depending on which kind of Instant Pot you have, this Instant Pot has a pressure cook button, or if you have a different one, it could have a manual button, but we're going high pressure all the way up to 40 minutes. When the 40 minutes is up, go ahead and turn the knob for a quick release and then take the lid off when all the pressure has released. Now you're gonna want some sort of oven mitt to pull out your can. You can use your trivet, but for me it was easier just to use my oven mitt and pull it right out. Now for my favorite part, it's time to take the foil off of the can. Now if I would have known that it was this easy to make dulce de leche, I would have made it many, many years ago. Now, the caramel or caramel is a little thick right now. The, the goal is to get it nice and smooth. So I like to dump mine into a bowl and put about a half a teaspoon of vanilla on top and just start mixing. Now keep mixing because it will get smooth and it will start to set up. As soon as it sets up, you can serve it with apples. I like to serve it with a little bit of sea salt on top. Now in the summertime, I'm eating a lot of rotisserie chickens. But lots of times we just chuck our rotisserie, the bones of the rotisserie when it's done. Hold on to those. You can make some delicious chicken broth out of it and then stick it in your fridge so when you need the broth, it's all ready to go. So that's what we're making next, chicken broth. All right, this next recipe, I'm putting my steamer basket in and then I had some rotisserie chicken that I cooked and used the chicken breast for and now the leftovers, I am gonna make some chicken broth. All right, so first I'm gonna add one onion that's not really chopped up, just quartered, thrown in there. Then I have two stalks of celery I'm putting in, and then one carrot or a few baby carrots just to give it a little bit more flavor. 
Now you can add some garlic if you want to. So then I'm gonna add eight cups of water into my Instant Pot. And that is all you have to do. So now I'm gonna put my lid on, making sure my knob is on ceiling. And then I'm gonna push the manual button and I'm gonna go all the way up to about 60 minutes. Now I let it release on its own for about 13 minutes. You can do it for 10. And then I pushed the knob over to venting. When the, all the steam is out, you can take the lid off and your chicken stock is ready to go. I love this because I get rotisserie chickens all the time and now I can get chicken broth with it. Now I just like to put mine in little containers, put the lid on and stick it in the fridge just because I usually use it in the next week or so. And that's all there is to it. And the last one, number five, is Instant Pot Mac and Cheese. Now this is the box mac and cheese. Now every mom, dad, grandpa, grandma, anyone who loves mac and cheese, you can thank me. Yes. You can thank me. This is my favorite way of making mac and cheese because you don't have to stand over the stovetop. Super simple. It's a game changer. So what you're gonna do, make sure you take the cheese out, yes. of course. I actually did that in college once. I just dumped everything into the cheese. Back oh, with no. it. But <gasps> we're learning from our mistakes. Okay, you're just gonna dump your noodles in. Then you're gonna add about one and a fourth cups of water just on top of your noodles. Just wanna make sure all your noodles are covered by water, that's the most important part. Okay, then this is my favorite part because you don't have to stir, you don't have to mix, you don't have to do anything. So we're just gonna add our four tablespoons of butter. So we're just kind of following the directions from the box. And then fourth cup of milk. This is a lot easier. That is a than, lot easier, I know. <laughs> this, than like, is, are the noodles done? Are they still chewy? Exactly. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna put the lid on. Make sure that your knob is turned to ceiling, not venting. Then we're gonna push either the pressure cook or manual button depending on what you have. And then because it's noodles, we're just going down to four minutes. So once you set the timer, then you can just walk away. All right, all done cooking. We're gonna turn the little knob to venting. Okay, it's all done venting. We're gonna open it up now. Nice and bubbly. So this is one way that you can do it. I just dumped everything in, but you could also just put the water and the noodles in and cook it and then add your milk and your cheese and your butter like everything else. But I just, I wanted to try to see if it works, so I threw everything in. So let's put in the cheese and we'll just see how it goes. I really try and search for things to make my life just a little bit easier. And yeah, just dumping everything in and mac and cheese. We're calling that a win. Win. <laughs> All right. Mm. Smells so, so good. This is like my favorite. <laughs> okay, if you've made it this far, you get something before everyone else. Next week, make sure you watch the video because I have a huge surprise to share with you. I am super excited. We've been waiting years for this. So any guesses put down below. I'm curious what you think. All right, guys, I'll see you next time. Bye.